so much. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Turn around and say to someone, God is good to me. Now, you didn't even have to think about that, did you? Ah, yes, he is good. Faith Baptist Campground, Brother Sammy Allen uh, invites uh, you and I to this uh, uh, Thanksgiving meeting that he has. He has a youth meeting. He has uh, uh, his camp meeting. He has another meeting uh, uh, during the year and a great litany of preachers and uh, speakers. And I hope that you will take advantage of this in this coming week. Uh, services at seven, uh, 9.30 in the morning, 2.30 in the afternoon, and 7.30 at night. And good singing, several uh, singing groups right there, and, uh, include some we have, many of the speakers we have here in our camp meeting. And I hope that you will take advantage of that wonderful, wonderful opportunity. When I think about these camp meetings, I, I, I think of George Whitfield, who is uh, one of my favorite preachers in all time, and uh, how that when the, he would come into town, that there would be uh, carriages rumbling down dirt roads and dust flying up, people along. Uh, 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 running, walking on horseback in carriages, and they'd go out to a field with 10,000 people. And George Whitfield, who was barred from preaching in churches because of his strong preaching, would stand up on a stump, and he had an inbuilt, God-given PA set. He could speak with clarity, and you could hear him I mean, for a quarter of a mile away, clearly, he had a tremendous booming uh, voice and a great man of God. And so I think of that when I think of camp meeting of uh, Brother George Whitfield, of which one of our counties were named after him. Now, they don't like to say that. Or they'd change the name of Whitfield County if they knew it was pre uh, named after a great revivalist, a great preacher like uh, Brother Whitfield. God bless you. And uh, I'm glad God's been good to you. Amen. And thank you for being here today. I like it when the Holy Ghost uh, interferes like he did with Brother Eddie. And he just absolutely jumped in there uh, in between Eddie singing in the next uh, phrase or words and kind of took that thing over. And uh, that is uh, wonderfully sweet when he does that, isn't it? Amen. I, I like for the Holy Spirit to hijack a service and uh, uh, take control of that. And God bless you. Turn your Bible, please, to the book of Proverbs, chapter 30. The book of Proverbs, chapter 30. And, of course, uh, I will read our, our uh, other scriptures later on from Isaiah chapter 40. But right now, uh, 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 Proverbs chapter 30. All right. You glad to be here today? Yes. I'm glad that you're well. I'm glad that you're able to be here. And our God is a great, great God. And we praise Him for that. All right. After the church service, the little boy told the pastor, incidentally, now, Brother John gave me this. I know, I know I'm going to give him credit for this, okay? And it says, after the church service, a little boy told the pastor, when I grow up, I'm going to give you some money. Well, thank you, the pastor replied. But why? Because my daddy says that you're one of the poorest preachers we've ever had. <laughs> so uh, there you go. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I, I never remember... Ben Hayden telling the story uh, about uh, uh, the lady who came by the door, and she says, uh, Pastor, that was a warm service, a warm sermon. And he said, well, thank you so much. So he goes and he looks up warm, and it says not so hot. <laughs> oh, and this might not be so hot. I saw somebody smile. I hadn't seen smile in the whole service, and I'm just glad. That, that's worth, worth using my uh, preaching time is that just to get you to smile. Amen? I uh, hope your face don't crack on you while you're smiling, all right? And if the way some of you look, if you, your face were to freeze like that, you'd be in pitiful shape. Amen? I can just see you uh, 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 with your lips looking like you just ate a prune uh, wanting to kiss your wife. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Moving right along. If you're able to stand, stand to your feet, and let's honor the reading of our Lord's Word. Uh, somebody says, well, I don't believe you ought to uh, be humorous uh, at a time like this. Uh, I, I know you don't believe that, and it reflects on you. That uh, I, I, Jesus had a good old time with people, didn't he? And uh, he says all things were made by him, and for his pleasure they are and were created. 
And God just wants to gather together with us and have a good time, don't he? Jesus just wants to enjoy the service, enjoy laughter, enjoy love, uh, enjoy you being here under the sound of the Word of God. So uh, pass out several compliments to those around you. Would you do it? Boost and build someone around you. Uh, <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Direct your attention, please, to the Word of God, Proverbs chapter 30. And uh, let me begin reading in verse uh, uh, 15, and we'll go on from there. I preached on this portion of the Scripture at one time. The horse leash has two daughters crying, Give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not it is enough. Now, we talked to you about that horse leaf, about it being a creature that was in stagnant ponds, and when a horse would go to drink, that uh, horse leaf would uh, attach itself to the nostrils of that horse, and uh, it would begin to suck the blood from that horse until that horse would drop dead in the field because it drained all the life out of that horse. And he said, no matter how much you give this, this creature, no matter how much you give him, he is never satisfied. Now, there's a horse leech that is hooked to the nostrils of the people of God. And his aim is, is to suck all the spiritual life out of you where that you have no life whatsoever. I'm glad that I am a H-A-P-P-Y happy Christian. Amen? I'm glad that I have a J-O-Y. Amen? I, I'll tell you, I'm glad my life is not miserable. I am glad that the Word of God, I am so happy that the Word of God, my friend, uh, the, the, I, that I, I'm not under no stress uh, with the Word of God. I praise God for His Word and he, how He keeps it. Uh, uh, the, uh, the eye of, that mocketh His Father and despiseth to obey His mother, the ravens of the valley shall pluck it out and the young eagles shall eat it. Now there's a, a antelope, a deer laying out in the fa field. Uh, uh, and, the, and the vultures come and they land on it. But you have to watch some of those wounded bees because they will jump up and, enter, uh, and injure you uh, if you get out too close to one of them. Uh, well, uh, what that vulture or that raven, that crow would do, he would go up to that uh, dead antelope or deer and he would begin to peck at its eyeball. Now, if there was any life, if there was any life in that antelope, that deer, or that animal, when that eyeball was approached by the beak of that uh, bird, that, that thing would jump, or, or if it were able, jump up. And here the Holy Ghost says, if you young folks, if you mock, if you do not obey your father and your mother, you are as dead as that animal laying there, and even if the spiritual bird of God, the dove of God, which is the uh, representative of the Holy Ghost, pecked at your eyeball, you wouldn't bat an eye because you have no life in you. And that is a great sign of that. And then he says, verse 18, And there be three things which are too wonderful for me, yea, four which I know not. Now, everyone, read that next verse with me, uh, verse 19. Are you ready? Let's read it together. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of ma a man with a maiden. And now, Heavenly Father, I yield myself to you as the servant of God. I pray that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit, without which I can do nothing, for you are the vine and I am the branch. And I am cognizant today that unless the Spirit of the Holy One come down, Father, it is vain in what we say today. We are as a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And I pray that you would move in the power of your Holy Spirit. May your Word come alive in our hearts, and we'll praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. Isaiah chapter 40. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth 
strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, but the, and the young men shall utterly fall. But, say, quote this with me, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now, we're talking about practical lessons from an eagle, this magnificent bird. The fact is that there are times when we all find ourselves in despair. We find ourselves depressed. We find ourselves uh, down and out. And, uh, and the fact is, uh, God is drawing this comparison right here and saying, would you like to be lifted up? Now listen, you know there's people that are miserable, that enjoys it. There's some folks that don't find, feel secure unless they are totally miserable. I, I, I don't enjoy misery, do you? I, I don't enjoy depression. I don't enjoy uh, despair. I don't enjoy discouragement. I want out of it, don't you? Now, again, uh, I, 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 take, I, I try to control my mind and do as Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true and honest and just and good and pure and loving and of good report and virtue and praise, he says, Think on these things. And when a thought comes to me that depresses me and despairs me, I ask myself this one question. Am I thinking on truth? Am I thinking on whatsoever is true? Am I thinking on whatsoever uh, is honest? And the answer is, no, I'm not. I am buying a lie of Satan. I, have, I am buying darkness instead of light. And so I, 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 I take charge of this mind game, this thinking right here. And he says, if you do this, if you will do this, you will be lifted up. And so here uh, we are. And he says, you will be lifted up. i tell you what, if you wait on the Lord, you'll mount up with wings as eagles. And we begin to look at this bird and see uh, uh, the lessons, the practical lessons that God has for us. First of all, we look at this patient waiting upon the Lord. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. That word wait upon, uh, kava is the word that means to take two or three strands and to bind them together. And if you have one strand... It can be broken two, maybe three, not so. Isn't that what Solomon said? He said a three-fold cord is not easily broken. And so he says that's the way waiting on the Lord is. It, it binds you together with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost so that you are able to endure they that wait upon the Lord. Now, again... My friend, we looked at the power of the Lord. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, that he uh, uh, is the creator of the earth, that he doesn't faint? God doesn't sleep. The Bible says that he that watcheth uh, Israel shall never sleep nor slumber. Uh, you ever wonder why a little nation with a little over three uh, million people that's surrounded by over a hundred million people you ever wonder how they can exist? And all those nations are saying, annihilate them. Destroy every Hebrew, every Jew. We will not be happy until they are extinct. Iran says uh, within 20, 25 years, there will be no such thing as, a, as Israel. We are annihilating them. Matter of fact, I saw in the news uh, last week that they have found out that, the, uh, that ISIS has now imported from Iran, from Iraq and Syria, scientists to build biological weapons to take to the people. Uh, they, uh, they have plans to go to Honduras, Nicaragua, come up to Mexico, into America, and bring those biological weapons with them. And folks, listen, I bet I serve a living God that doesn't sleep, that doesn't faint, that doesn't slumber. And I'll tell you, he has his angel that looks into his face watching over me day and night. Amen. I don't mind waiting on him because of that. Now, look at the provision. We've looked at the power. Look at the provision of the Lord. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. 
Do you ever get to the point where you can't go any further? Do you ever get to the appointment, a point to where you say, this is it. I think I'm finished. I think it's over for me. I don't think I'm going to make it. How many of you ever felt like, I don't think I'm going to make it. How many of you ever felt like that? Oh, yes, you have. I don't think I can get through this. Well, you can't own your own strength, but you can own the strength of the Lord. So we begin to look at this, uh, uh, this thing, and the Lord compares us in the Bible to several things. He compares us to lions. And then he, can, he, can, he and, and on, compares us to trees and compares us to a tent sometimes and compares us to a soldier. But here we, ta we take on this thing of the eagle. He draws some parallels of the Christian life. And first of all, we begin to look at the sight of this eagle. We said this eagle, uh, I'm, I'm his sight is better than anything that we can even imagine so that if you have the eye of an eagle, you ever have anybody tell you you have an eagle's eye? That you can see a quarter from a quarter of a mile away. He has to, God made him that way uh, so that he can uh, retrieve game and that he can live. And so we looked at the sight of this eagle. The, uh, then we looked at the strength of this eagle. I mean, he's able to carry a, a, a pickup with his talons, a, 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 a lamb, a, a, a small antelope, a, 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 a rabbit. He is a strong, strong person. God said, you want to be like that in Christ? You want to spiritually be strong? Uh, you, look what the New Testament said. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Did you ever feel weakened? Did you ever feel weakened? My daddy feels weakened right now because part of him been amputated. But wait just a minute. He has a strength outside of himself. He has waited on the Lord, and the Lord will renew him and lift him up on eagle's wings. Oh, now again, number three, look at the sustenance of this eagle. Look at him. Eagles are careful about what they eat. I wish that were true with the people of God. I wish we would pay attention to our spiritual intake. What does the little song say? You will sing it with me? Input, output. What goes in is what comes out. Input, output. And he goes on to say, your mind is a computer read. And the fact is, folks, what you take in is what you put out. Look at this eagle. He ain't going to eat any junk. I mean, he watches what he eats, and because of their skills at hunting, they can pick and choose what kind of food that they want that's abundant and available and good for them. Hey, are you listening to me? Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Little ears, what you hear. Little mouth, what you say. Little, uh, uh, little hands, what you touch. Little feet, where you go. Because, folks, what you invest in and what you... I put in is what comes out of you. You ever go anybody around anybody and all they want to do is talk trash? I'm not talking about vulgarity, and I'm, I'm not just junk. Uh, from the, I, I'm, I'm telling you, something. You ever you ever feel like you want to say, "Shut up"? Now we don't say that because we're Christians, and that's not really Christ-like. Amen. But the fact is, folks, sometimes uh, you know you feel like that you've enjoyed all you can stand. And here, whatever you take it out, this eagle, he is selective about what he eats. They prefer to eat food that is a fresh kill, such as fish, rabbits, small mammals, and uh, maybe sometimes even other birds. Uh, but, and they'll, every now and then they'll eat something dead. You say, yuck. Well, you sit down over a chicken, and you're about to eat something dead. Amen. Me and Dad went to the Longhorn Friday in Wanda, and we ordered something dead. Amen? And I'm telling you, we chowed down on it. I, I don't know where, what they fed that beef. I hope it was a, a, a corn and grass, but I'm telling you, that was yummy. Dad ordered, there you go, Dad ordered him, Dad ordered him a, a, a Flo's steak. And I forget what I ordered me, but I got ribs with mine. 
but he, did, he totally enjoyed that. And, and sometimes this, this bird will eat something uh, dead, but not as, uh, as it's decomposing, and it stinks. They won't touch that right there. Now, again, you say, what does that have to do with a believer? The fact is, the, uh, the eagle Christians follow the admonition of the Scripture. They, they avoid stinking, sour, bad, dark doctrine. You need, to, you need to watch. You need to watch what channel you watch. That doesn't sound right, does it? Watch what channel you watch. Well, you need to don't watch the channels you watch then. How about that? Oh, somebody comes and says, Oh, I saw somebody on TV, and wow, ooh, ah. Well, wait just a minute. You better check them out with a book. I like what Jim Hammond said up there in Chattanooga. They, they questioned him. Uh, on him saying, and Jim Hammond is a fine Christian man, not a perfect man, but a fine Christian man. And he said, he said, I'm telling you, we better keep our eyes on the Muslim community. We better monitor them. Oh, a storm came out against them. And Jim Hammond said, let, let me tell you something. He said, if you say to me that God said so and so, I'm going to go to the Bible and find out if he does, if he said that. And he said, okay, if you want to know if what they say is right, go to the Koran. Amen? Or ask your children. They teach them the Koran at school. But God forbid they open the pages of this wonderful book. They won't allow you to even mention the name of Christ. But you can read the Koran and the five pillars of Islam... Uh, in our schools, God help this nation. And the fact is, my friend, uh, 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 you can, uh, Diana, you can tell David that I slipped up again and mentioned Obama. He tells me on Sunday when he leaves, now you need to let Obama alone. He, he just gouging me just a little bit. But here, listen, he watches what he eats. And Christians, oh, listen, you better guard what comes into this cranial matter? You better watch what goes into your cerebral vertex. You better watch what you record right back here. Look, I can be up here preaching, and man, they songs come to me out of the 50s and 60s. Let's forget about the killing and the crying and shooting and dying and felt and switching knife. Now, let's forget about living. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. My buddy Marty Robbins. Amen. Oh, listen. Just walk on by. Do, do, do. Wait on the corner. Hey, you say, where do where'd they come from? I've never forgotten any of them. You know why? Because they were recorded years and years ago. Right back here in my mind. And anything that stimulates or associates with that thought, it comes to conscious level of thinking. And it has to go through the judge now before I entertain it too much. Everyone has a judge sitting right here. And in the, the, the frontal uh, cerebral cortex, you have a judge sitting there, and everything you think, every thought that rises to your mind needs to be taken to the judge's bench. Amen? Hey, we live in a world of demon-possessed people. Now, I'm not a weirdo, but, but hey, uh, I, I'm telling you folks, uh, I have dealt with demon possession. I stay as far away from it as I... When I study, and i got to study right now on, on, on Satan and demons that I want to expose, but I, I cover the page like this when I'm reading it. I'm not going to expose myself to that. Hey, you watch some... Hey, you young folks, you think you're in control? You listen to some of those songs... And, brother, it is recorded right back there, and you are programmed. No wonder we have this thing in Missouri at the college and in New York at the college and a de bunch of demon-possessed animals that is running those schools that taxpayer dollars go for. Amen? Matter of fact, you ought to shut down. You, you, you kids ought to amen. They ought to shut down all the schools and start all over again. Amen? Amen? Because all they are, all they are 
is organizations run by a leftist bunch of people that hates this country, that hates capitalism, and hates everything decent we stand for, that hates Christianity, and hates God, and hates Christ. Yeah. Amen? Amen. 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 To the TV audience who's watching this on Friday, uh, I'll tell you, this is not a Christ-friendly world in which we live. And so here, watch out what you take in. Avoid that which stinks. Guard what comes into your heart, what comes into your mind. Guard uh, your life. Amen. No wonder David said, Set thou a watch upon my lips, my sentries, my guards, my informants, my spies. Tell me that there's been things on the Facebook that need not be on there. Uh, quit sending your days away and, and get healthy. Amen? Quit communicating family things that are on there that, that the world knows. Amen? Hey, listen, don't pull your heart open and let the world see uh, what's in there. Satan will use it to combat against your life. Amen? Stay away from it. I, I wish every member of this church would mark it off. I told Brother Jones, you stay off of that. You stay away from that. You'll contaminate yourself and others around you. Uh, preachers don't have any business on there gossiping, criticizing, and, hey, and, and discussing doctrine. Number one, uh, I'm not sure they're up to the level that they need to do that. Amen. Stay away from it, I am telling you. I already, hey, uh, and don't you think I don't feel it when it comes back from, uh, uh, it goes out from here, it comes back. I can tell when it bounces back at me. But I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a loving, sweet, uh, I, I hate confrontation, but uh, when I preach, I'm not intimidated. I'm called. I, I, hey, listen, my friend, I, I don't tremble in my boots, Brother, Brother Bob. Do you? I like what Brother Bob said. Preached one day into a backer-ridden area where they raised tobacco and preached against smoking uh, cigarettes. And after the search, went back to change his shirt. He was wringing wet sweat. That's back, back when he used to jump, holler, jump up on the pulpit and uh, 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 carry on like that. And uh, he said, I do it now in my heart, but my body don't cooperate. Uh, and some guy came back there and said to Brother Bob, you know what, Brother Bob? I wouldn't preach that if I had the United States Army behind me. And Brother Bob said, well, I wouldn't either. Amen. But he had someone, something greater than that behind him. Amen. He had the unction, the power of the Holy Ghost, of the living God behind him. Uh, Isaiah 52, verse 11. Depart ye, depart ye, go out from then, touch not the unclean thing, go ye out in the midst of her, be ye clean, bear the vessels of the Lord. What? Know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? Amen? Oh, I'm telling you, it's time for the people of God to quit eating junk. Amen? It's time for the people of God to watch their intake. Hey, take a new look at the old book. Take a new look at the Bible. Take a new look at the old book. Take a new look at God's Word. Uh, amen? Uh, I started to sing the second part, but I forgot it. Brother Joe, Brother Joe knows it, okay? And, uh, okay, we'll do it later. <laughs> but the fact is, take in a healthy, saturate yourself, baptize yourself, bathe yourself in the precious, inerrant, infallible King James Bible. Amen? I mean, have a healthy intake. It's clean. It's living. It isn't dead. Amen? Boy, I go to places and some of those folks open a book and start reading it, and I think, I thought it was a Bible. Well, I'm going to go on. I felt it back again. I don't harp on that all the time because that's what we use. But there's people wandering in who are not like us on that. And I just in, inform you where we stand. 
2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Now, I'm not going to preach on separation, even though right now I'm itching to. Preaching on eagles, right? They that wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings as eagles. You got it? That's what I'm preaching. I'm running a rabbit right now. No, I'm not. I'm just telling you right here. Be clean. Be right. Stay with the Word of God. If you're going to soar spiritually, then you can't feed on gossip. I said to Brother Tim this morning, he is leaving. We've got a lot of positions to fill. But it's not going to be a soap opera. I mean, it's not going to turn into something, a, a, a jostling for position. Amen? Uh, uh, it'll be handled properly. And uh, 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 thank you for your love and your concern and won't do the work of God. But hey, that's not what that's about. And the fact is, right here, oh, listen, don't feed on gossip and backbiting and argument and slothfulness and doubt and disbelief and jealousy and envy and greed and feel like pornography. Stay away from that stuff. It'll destroy your life. Oh, listen, my friend, fill your heart and mind with the Word of God. The Bible says, Job said, I esteem thy word to be more necessary than my daily food. Amen. That's what I need. David said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. David said, I will hide thy word, thy word, thy word in my heart that I sin not against thee. I'm out of time. I'm about to wrap this up this morning. Second, uh, listen, again, let me say this to you, uh, brethren. Uh, uh, the Bible says, finally, brethren. Uh, well, let me go on up above there. Verse 6. Be anxious for nothing. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. I say, it's Thanksgiving week. It's my Thanksgiving message. With thanksgiving. Say with thanksgiving. Thank both of you. With thanksgiving. I'm not, you're not going to get out of here if you say it with thanksgiving, all of you. Say with thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God, he says. And he said, And the God of peace that passes all understanding shall keep your heart and your mind. Uh-oh. What happened to your mind? Have you lost your mind? Anybody ever ask you that? What happened to your mind? And the peace of God that passes all understanding. Shall I, I'm having fun, but some of y'all are not. But if you'll start having fun, I'll get through quicker. And you can go and beat other people to the dinner table. So, then he says, if you want the peace of God to pass all understanding, keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. He said, finally, brethren, here's how to do it. Whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just. And he names eight words, and he said, think on these things. Some of y'all need to start thinking different. Some of us need to change the way we are thinking. Amen. Again, that's what he says. Now, again, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word that you make it grow by that. Somebody says, oh, I love deep theology. Oh, I love the milk. I, I like it. When, I like something that's a little better than milk. I like it when it's churned and it's called buttermilk. Buttermilk means better milk. <laughs> My wife says, You want dinner tonight? I say, I think I'll just drink a glass of buttermilk. Now that's spiritual. Amen. So Peter says, As newborn, some of you think you've grown above that. Some of you are, are, are looking for to dive down deep and come up dry. But I'm telling you, you they, there's not a one in this building that's beyond John 3.16 yet. I'm not saying you don't know a few verses. I'm not saying you're not spiritual. I'm saying the fact is, enjoy the simplicity of the gospel. 
Amen? Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us. If you counted on anything to save you or keep you saved other than the grace of the good Lord, my friend, you are in deep trouble. You're in trouble. The simplicity of the gospel. Job chapter 23, verse 12. Neither have I gone back from thy commandments of thy, his lips. I have esteemed thy words to be more necessary than my daily food. Jeremiah 51, verse 15, verse 16. Thy word were found, said Jeremiah, and I did eat them, and they were thy word was unto me as joy and rejoicing of heart. I start riding in my song, a car and, and listen to a song, and I think a mother and I cry. But the Word of God bails me out. Amen. Absent from the body. Present with the Lord. Oh, listen, thank God for that. The eagle is equipped with, a, with strong talons for gripping, and believers are to keep a grip on the Lord and on the Word of God and everything right and good and light. Turn loose of darkness. Yeah. Does not the Bible say He has translated us from darkness into the light of His dear Son. Amen. Oh, blessed be the Lord. I'd like to park there and preach, but I can't. How oh, you say, I'm holding on, holding on my hind leg, holding on my foot. Uh, you, uh, look, you think you're holding on to your salvation. Come up here and grab hold of me. I guarantee you can't hold, hold me. Uh, you say, what if I'm big? Well, I'm bad. <laughs> to the bone, as they say. Uh, you, you, you say, you're kind of cocky, aren't you? No, I'm assured. I'm equipped. I, 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 have a, a, I serve a risen Savior who's in the world today. Oh, listen, my friend. Now, again, in, in other words, these people... Have that grip on the Word of God. They are have a close walk with God. First Thessalonians five twenty one. Prove all things. Listen, hold fast to that which is good. Now again, it don't say to a, go to a seminar and learn ten ways to do it. Just go to the Word of God. Amen. Second Timothy one thirteen. Hold fast to the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. The strength of an eagle, the sight of an eagle, the sustenance of an eagle. You have got to hear this next one. The search for a mate. You would not believe how this bird starts hunting for a spouse. I mean, you, uh, he defies every philosophy of life today that you will read with psychologists, psychiatrists, and other nuts. I'm just saying this to you, my friend. You please listen to me. This bird, God made him to where he would choose a mate. And he has a process. I, I love how he does it. He plays games. You know that? Uh, they, they play tag, and they play fetch the stick. Really? You say, tell us about that. Come back. <laughs> we'll approach that the next time. The search for a mate. I sure get hungry for the Word of God sometimes. There's sometimes that I have to flee into the rock of ages. And I am downcast. I will go to the song. And I will learn praise from the Psalms. I will go to the Proverbs, one chapter of Proverbs for each day of the month, and I learn wisdom. Amen. I go to the book of John, the Gospel of John, and I learn love. I find the deep love of God involved right there. It, isn't, the love, isn't the Word of God wonderful? Brother Eddie's coming with a number. You're here today, and, and you're searching. Some of you are, are searching. Some of you, I, I go around people. Uh, look, uh, I'm, I'm a people person. I love people. Uh, I, my degree in psychology didn't change me. 
the Word of God set me in a mold. But I will say this to you, my friend. I look, man, I see so many people that are so love-starved. All they need to know is that they are genuinely loved by God, no strings attached. They're not on probation. I'd hate for God to put me on probation because I would, my, I would, be, I would revoke it in, in the first hour that I'm awake every day. But God just unconditionally loves me. I falter and I fail. But 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, and that's to believers, that's not to unbelievers. But people who think you can lose it, amen? The Bible says if any man says he has no sin, he deceived himself. And if you lose it because you sin, how do you get it back? He says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, listen, and to cleanse us. That's a matter of the conscience. That's a soft pillow to lay your head on. He cleanses us from all sin. I'm glad I have a loving, forgiving Lord that when I trip and I fall, somebody said, well, if I thought like you did, I, I, you know, I, I'd go out and sin all I wanted to. I, I, I normally say, yeah, I do. I sin more than I want to. I plan not to sin, but guess what? The power of this old flesh is strong. I, it, it'll work you down. So today, as a believer, you may be here, and you may say, Preacher, well, I tell you what, I need to recommit myself to a pure thinking, a pure life with a Savior. Now, I know that's hard to obey that because you get up and people, and, and you're thinking right now because of your pride, well, you know what? Wonder what they'll think I've been doing. You know, it don't matter. Uh, you know, I, I love the guys in here. I love these deacons. They're they're precious friends to me. You know, uh, but I don't worry near as much about what they think as I do what God knows. And this morning, you will overcome your pride, and you'll say, you know, I am dealing with this thing in my life, and it has weakened me. It is like the horse leash that has attached itself and it's pulling my joy from me. And this morning, I want to come and have it exterminated. I want that, I want that gone and I want God to give me power to deal with that in my life as a Christian, as a believer. I dare you to come to the Lord with that matter. Bring it to Him. Today, Maybe you're here and you've never been saved. I look at people that are not saved in the congregation and, and we praise the Lord and they think, what, what's with them? I wish you knew. I, I wish you, uh, Maze Jackson put it this way, get under the spout where the glory runs out. Amen. I'll tell you today, people of God, why don't you, we turn to God with all of our heart. Do you want a revival? Do you want a revival? God says, I want you to have revival. Well, if God says, I want you to have revival, and you say, I want a revival, then he's put the ball in your court. The first step is yours, and you're about to get an awesome chance. As we stand to our feet, if you're able, Eddie sings the first song, Step Out, Submit to the Lord on All Things. Our brother is singing. How about it? My